common modeling tips and pitfalls. And I will have a few slides with just text. Uh, these are coming from Boris. Uh, so the first uh, very important issue, please don't make large models till you start simulating. The ideal way is just you create a model of two reactions. You run it, you make sure that it runs, that you have parameters. It makes reasonable assumption. If something is increasing, it's increasing. If it's decreasing, it's decreasing. Then you add one more reaction and you again run it. And so this way you do the model. You never create a model like reaction, beautiful reaction diagram up to your satisfaction and then start running it. You will not be able to run it to understand where it's uh, uh, problems, where why it's given something different. So do it just one by one. By one. Uh, so as a second tip, always pay attention of what is your initial condition. Uh, if you have stimuli, then maybe this stimuli uh, is applied at steady state. Again, you have to clearly understand how your system is initiated. And when you do this uh, one reaction, two reactions, three reactions model, again, uh, learn already at this step how to equilibrate. So run the model with all the protocols that Pedro and Jan were talking about up to equilibration, then add stimuli, and then continue running it. And after each uh, increase in complexity of the model, do it again and again and again. Because uh, if at some point, for example, your model will not equilibrate, then before stimuli, then you will know what's going on, what's wrong. And again, these slides will be in the Dropbox, so just listen, don't uh, try to make uh, comments. Uh, the next point is, uh, is not only about spatial models, but generally, don't go into too much uh, uh, professional details till you did it simply. So do ODE first. Even if your model is very spatial, still try to do ODE system. And once you're happy with ODE, convert it into spatial. If you do special model, again, don't try to do it on a complicated geometry with uh, uh, like edges, uh, thin parts and so on. Do it on a sphere, it works on a sphere. Do it in a more complicated geometry, it works on a more complicated geometry. Change it and refine the grid. So uh, very, very, very important. Don't uh, make complicated environment till you run it on a simple environment. Run it for uh, small time points. Just uh, uh, run it for uh, one second, it works, run it for five seconds, it works, run it for 10 seconds, and see if at some point time courses goes up, if at some point uh, something is uh, not uh, running to steady state, you will know where the issue. Uh, so, numerics. Very important is to understand that uh, numerics is uh, may, may introduce errors that are not even related to your uh, like topology of the model. And I will talk a little bit more about it later, but generally uh, there is a error tolerance that you have to take care of. You have to always make sure that uh, your results are reasonable, that you have a proper scale of simulation results. You don't have a negative concentrations. Uh, you uh, don't have oscillation when you expect us when you don't expect it, and so on and so forth. So, uh, 
yeah. So these are slides from Boris. And I will mix my slides on pitfalls with my slides on standards and parameters. Because uh, the major question that everyone asks is where to do, where to get parameters. How do I uh, find rate constant concentration for specific cell type, for a specific system, specific organism? And the major answer in big red, just first of all, search for other models. These can be models with just like a couple of proteins that you are interested and the rest would be different proteins. It may be models in a different organism, but you should look at what is already done and how other modelers approached it. Unless you are so experienced modelers that you did uh, 50 models and you know all related models. So if you start with something that you were not aware, then start from something that was done before. And these models will give you some basic understanding of parameters because you will never know all the parameters, uh, experimental parameters in your, in your model. There always will be some parameters that you have to guess, have to fit, and it's better to start with some reasonable numbers that someone else guessed fitted. And then you will question each of these parameters. You will uh, uh, validate them. You will change them. You should never trust a single parameter in your final model. You should question each of them. But as a first starting point, use what other people did. Then you will have some reasonable qualitative behavior and you can change parameters and see if qualitative behavior will be changed. So now how you find other models. So the best way to find other models is through biomodels database. I mean, so they changed rec recently the links. So it's always better to just go to Google and Google Biomodels database. Then you go here and they recently added this Biomodels parameter. So go here and type. Uh, so give me something that you would like to look for. So do you want to uh, give me something like P KC, something that we search in our group. And then you got these, uh, all the instances in different biomodels where it was used. And very often there are multiple instances, but it's the same biomodel. So here is biomodel 88, biomodel 88, biomodel 88, but there are many. So biomodel 356, PKCP, model 394. So by looking at the context of the interaction here, you can say, okay, so I would like now to go and check this biomodel. And then when you check this biomodel, uh, it's uh, not very easy to check it here. So they have components, but it's really uh, very sparse information. You can click on reactions and again, so this is not quite useful. So in this case, you can go, uh, so this is C Vakumar. So you go into the virtual cell or Kupazi. So to go to Kupazi, you just uh, go here to files and you download oh the file and we will talk later about what uh, all this sbml l2v1 mean but just what okay. you 
is about this XML. Someone wants to ask a question, please. Because I could hear some uh, uh, voice. So in virtual cell, we have a way to directly import models. You see my screen, right? I share the whole screen. Yes. Yeah. So we can go to this BMDB and let's see if it's there. Yes, there are multiple models and I don't... Uh, so which, which model did I search for? Uh, EGF receptor signal pathway. Okay. So we go here. We bring it, import. And then you can explore it. Uh, six hours of Zoom is really not good for any computer. Okay, so it's actually not very big model. Uh, so now you can see it, you can explore all the rates. And very often these models are annotated, not in this case. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, there are even links to the sources. Uh, there are some links here. So it goes to the PubMed, it goes to Gene Ontology. So uh, this is the way to bring, to start and bring some information into the model. Uh, what else? Biomoles database, parameter search, SABIRK. SABIRK is a database that is specifically designed for uh, uh, reaction kinetics. That's how it's called. Uh, Biochemical Reaction Kinetics Database. And it should have a lot of information, but this information is really difficult to get because it's too specific. So if we search here, PKC, then it's it will be 436 uh, uh, entries. And they are kind of, uh, some of them are generic. So if you click here to 7-Eleven ECN, then you see it's PKC somewhere here. Uh, that's why it's, uh, yeah, dependent protein kinase C. So, but uh, uh, you can do advanced search, you can do uh, catalyst, PKC, C, and then it will give you some more suggestions. So this will be already less. So it's like 21. So uh, again, most likely you won't find exactly what you need, but at least you will find something, uh, some uh, usually this is, no, we are not going clicking here. You are clicking here. And then you will get this uh, uh, key M value. Uh, concentration values. Concentration of enzymes. So it takes some time, but... Uh, Again, it will give you some guidelines of where to go. Many models are not deposited anywhere. So if you go to PubMed database, uh, then you should be able to uh, 
go search for like PubMed.go. So PQC model. Hmm? Ah. C model mathematical and then many of these papers will have a supplemental material where you will have a no we don't want pk we want pkc so yeah it will take some time to get into uh some of those but they may have a, a supplemental material with a file and this file can be sbml can be maybe matlab can be uh, something else but it will contain some of the parameters so uh surprisingly wikipedia is a, a good source and then react home and other databases they will not give you directly parameters but they will give you papers that refer to specific interactions. So, Michael, uh, can I yeah. can I just also recommend a, a first try at bio numbers? Some oh yeah, it's yeah. not very extensive, but for me, I often find things there in bio numbers. Yeah, bio numbers is uh, I don't know if uh, all everyone is aware of it or not, but it's amazing. Uh, amazing collection of unstructured uh, numbers that used in biology so again you can type here pkc and let's see if it will get something uh, yes parameter for membrane binding of protein kinase c alpha so uh, but it it will also have diffusion coefficients and concentrations and just a lot of useful numbers. Yeah. So something that is very important. When you search, don't be too specific. Like don't uh, type exactly protein kinase C alpha, but try to uh, get like as broad as possible. If you think that about diffusion, just range of diffusion may be sometimes more than enough uh okay thank you Anne. so now let's say that you get numbers you put them into your simple model you run it and you get something like that so when you run a model and you got simulation results go through each similar time course for each variable one by one and pay attention what you get even if you are happy with uh, qualitative like you expect that some of the proteins will go down or will go to steady state and it goes down or to steady state pay attention to numbers because if your model will produce something like uh, one variable will go to 300 another variable will go to e to the minus nine then maybe something is wrong maybe not but you have to really pay attention because these uh, 11 orders of magnitude difference is something that uh, kind of deserves your attention. And here we come to the next very important questions. That when you find parameters, it's uh, absolutely like numbers make very little sense unless you look into units. So all units are in many many papers are different even if you go into by numbers there is, or by numbers specially but by models also have sometimes units in nanograms sometimes in micromolar nanomolar and so on so here i have a interface of virtual cell and the simplest uh, and 
very often missed issue with virtual cell that by default, like you introduce membrane, you are happy, you want to have a, a multi-compartment uh, uh, model. So very often even membrane uh, species in experimental papers are given by concentration units just because they measured as everything being smashed and it's just uh, uh, in molar concentration. In virtual cell, we always use surface density. So any, uh, un any species that is located on a membrane would be molecules per micrometer square. Unless uh, this model is imported from SBML, then, when, by the way, when you import models from like biomodels, then all the units will be those that are in original model. If you create, design your own model, then the units will be in default virtual cell units, which will be micromolar and molecules per micrometer square. Then, it's a good way to test yourself and to make sure that you understand all the units is uh, to go into this kinetics uh, tab for each reaction and just look at roll rate and KF, KR and make sense of them. And then uh, you will get a good understanding of the model. So we have a on rate, off rate, and we have a rule rate. And what's a rule rate? Rule rate is actually like for mass action kinetics by molecular, in, it's AB times K on. And for a unimolecular, it's K on times A. So, and then you will understand what's going on from here. So, you have a rate per second per nanomolar, but you have a rule rate of molecules per micrometer square per second. So how it happens? It happens because you have a one species in volume, one species on a membrane, and this rate is per second per nanomolar. So when you have a species in volume, which is a nanomolar, times species on the membrane, its molecules per micrometer square times per second per nanomolar. Nanomolar will cancel out and we will get these molecules per micrometer square per second. So this is some simple exercise that has to be done each time when you start multi-compartmental modeling and not only this also scaling by volumes of compartments but just to make sure that you understand how the units are calibrated so what's here again i don't uh, have a reaction itself but i just can say that if both on and off rates are per second then it's a unimolecular reaction and if rule rate is nanomolar per second, then it's a unimolecular reaction in cytosol. So you have a species which is a volumetric with concentration nanomolar, and the rate is a concentration of species times rate. So the rule is uh, the rate of the reaction is nanomolar per uh, second. And again, uh, refresh, look back into what Les was talking. He was uh, mentioning like th this kind of uh, uh, parameters versus uh, rates. So again, just uh, I will not go through all of those, but pay attention that for each parameter, you have to clearly understand units and you have to clearly understand how these units are combined. So if uh, you bind membrane bound species to uh, volume, then 
what will happen and what will be the rate and what will be the outcome. And then after that, you go back and you look at this. And now if one of them is in molecules and another is in micromoles, then it already can make sense that this is surface density and this is micromoles, which is converted to picomoles and which will be uh, kind of maybe uh, still too small, but kind of maybe makes sense. Again, then you look at the volumes and then you finally question that maybe I should go and do it stochastically if this number is really what deterministic model tells me, but uh, it's too small. So again, the model will never tell you that, but another nice trick is just convert, like think about your volume and multiply concentration times volume and see if it makes sense. If your number of molecules and multiply well by Avogadro number and scale and by uh, uh, unit. Uh, if uh, if you will have a reasonable number of molecules, if you have like half molecule in a volume, then something is not good. And then finally, uh, if you will get this number and you think that it still makes sense and your this model is very multi-scale, so it really uh, goes from hundreds to e to the nine and minus nine. Uh, go into the virtual cell occupazi and change uh, uh, the simulation parameters. So go here, go into edit, and go into solver and see that if your error tolerance is e to the minus nine which means that you may miss something. So absolute tolerance e to the minus nine means that whatever is e to the minus 10 will be equal to zero. And relative tolerance roughly means that uh, two species, uh, the difference of two species, if it's uh, uh, divided by the largest period, the difference of concentrations of two species divided by the uh, concentration of the larger species, again, it's uh, considered to be zero if it's less than this e to the minus nine. So, and again, to do it, you have to start from the very simple models and do it each time after you add one, two reactions. Otherwise, you will be completely lost. So, again, Coming back to scale, you always pay attention to numbers. Like in special models, you may find something like if like me, you are doing patterns and you are trying to find some nice parameters that reproduce uh, uh, naturally occurring patterns, you may find this nice cartoon and you will be very happy till you will look up here. And you will see that actually is just a, a simulation error because it goes up to nine digits with exactly the same values. So uh, this is what you have to always pay attention. The next one is uh, parameters. So you do a model, you are happy with units, you check uh, everything that uh, each time everything is reasonable. And then at some point you may see that everything looks okay, but the model is doing something weird, completely unreasonable. One of the reasons for this unreasonable behavior can be that you have already too many parameters that you deleted reactions but parameters state and so on so especially if you use like k k k k and it's like in programming there are local parameters there are global parameters 
you may introduce several global parameters that is used everywhere, overriding everything what you do in different reactions, and then somewhere else you introduce local parameter. Uh, so virtual cell and Scopazi both have a tab where you can see all the parameters. And once you digged, like worked on a model long enough that you start to, you already deleted uh, introduced functions, deleted functions, change rate loss and so on, check that all your uh, parameters are consistent. And very often you will note that you will have to go and delete like uh, 10, 15 old parameters. So in virtual cell, there is this uh, uh, panel here, parameter functions units, where you go into and you see what are global parameters, what are just parameters, functions. So this is in the same in Kupazi, very important. Uh, the next, even if you checked parameters, you did everything nicely, the model still can give you something very weird. And the reason, especially in virtual cell, I think that Kapazi is a, a different design in this way. So virtual cell has a separate la layers. So you have here, you see physiology, then application, and then simulation. And simulation is done on the level of just math, math symbols. So uh, in a model, you call very nice, uh, uh, like you can call some geometrical regions, one name, compartment, another name, uh, and so on and so forth. Here you get down to equations. First of all, it's very instructive just to see equations. And again, when you do the first uh, several steps, go here to mass model. So here is mass model and then mass descriptive language, mass, mass description language. And just see how it looks. So uh, if you are mass inclined, you will recognize ODEs, you will recognize PDEs. They may be in a not very convenient form when, for example, PDE is not just equation. So this is PDE for run. And it has a rate, which is uh, the term, the reaction part. And it has a diffusion, which is a term for diffusion. And it has initial value. But uh, and then you can go and look for this run C diffusion rate. Oh, no, no. Look for this J underscore R0 and find uh, the rate and make sure that it is what you expected. But so first of all, just check it. Second, refresh math. So if you did a lot of changes, then virtual cell may be not clever enough to automatically uh, propagate all the changes down to the level of mathematical equations. So this is like a, a virtual cell specific hack. Uh, whatever you're in trouble, go and refresh math. Uh, it's like... A, uh, refreshing uh, page when it's uh, uh, locked. So it, it may help. So the next one. Uh, there are variable numeri different numerical ways to compute. There are uh, different solvers that are provided by virtual cell. There is this magic button for variable reduction. So uh, if something is uh, weird, and weird means that uh, uh, like it goes, uh, for example, into very low regions and starts to oscillate. So it definitely, you can see that it's related to numerics and not just your model. Then try different solvers. Try different solvers, try different uh, uh, parameters, increasing parameters. Everything comes uh, numerical uh, simulation. Uh, when I when I mean parameters here, 
tolerance, play with time steps, uh, decrease, increase uh, uh, time when you run it. So something like that. Uh, but just play with it. And if you do it regularly, once you build a model, then you always will know at which step you got this error. So uh, there is this magic button variable reduction that uh, caused some of the grief to us. So virtual cell, and I believe Copazi, by default tries to solve uh, uh, equations in the most effective way. And the most effective way is if you have some algebraic relationships between parameter between variables, then you would rather uh, uh, include them and solve less differential equations for for less variables. So if you know that a plus b goes to constant equals to constant, then it doesn't make sense to solve two differential equations, one for a, one for b. You solve one for a, and then you uh, b find from uh, constant minus a. But if you have multiple compartments and you have uh, these compartments of very different volumes, then it may introduce uh, numerical errors. So if you try everything and you are not happy with results, try to uncheck this variable reduction and it will, uh, uh, it may help you. But again, the bottom line for everything what I'm talking, uh, check scales. If you have uh, one compartment of uh, huge and another compartment is small, then maybe you're doing, doing something wrong because you introduce multiple scales and multi-scale simulations are always tricky. So uh, I'm done with uh, tips and pitfalls. And before I go into very quick uh, discussion of model exchange and standards, any questions or any comments from our team, so from participants? Um, Michael, I, I have to admit that I left for a couple of minutes. Did you end up showing how you could control units, uh, unit systems? Change units. No, I didn't. I can show it. There, there are so many different uh, features of our tools that, yeah, uh, one of uh, uh, ways. So if you import a model with units, you will get these imported units by default. But you may want to have a model with units that are described somewhere else. So you don't want to convert units yourself, but you want to have them already in a way that are described on some paper. In this case, you go here, change unit system. So it's parameters, functions, units, and then the default unit system is micromoles, micrometer square, micrometer cube, and so on. There is a general. And in general, you can change it to whatever you want. You can go to meters, my meter square, Okay, no, let's not be silly. Millimeters, millimeter square, millimeter cube, and then time minutes. Very often the time in papers and given in minutes. And then uh, uh, volume can be, for example, nanomolar per millimeter square. So you can change it here. And then when you change it, you go OK, and yeah, I, I did it already on existing model. After you change it, you will see something very weird. Uh, you will see that all your rates are scaled by this e to the 22. And why? Because virtual cell assumed that your units were correct initially. And what I did, I just changed the scale. So this is uh, to bring units to molecules per minute, nanomolar what I changed, 
but if converted back it would go back into the same number so therefore the trick that if you want to make a model that consistent with units described somewhere in the paper then you start a new model so in a new model you go by a model and if before you introduced any parameters anything in the model you just change unit system you are safe now everything what's uh, what will be introduced in a model will be exactly in the units that you want say for example general uh, just nanomolar okay so any more uh, suggestions what to mention um sometimes people just want one or two reactions from an existing model and want to copy yeah. and paste it into their own model they can do that too yeah yeah so there is a like i i i, I didn't want to go too much we self specific but uh uh you can change you can copy from one model to another so let's go for example we want to copy this reaction copy and we go here and we go paste paste and it should ask me yeah so in this reaction uh yeah in this case there is nothing to ask because uh, uh, I move from single compartment to a single compartment. So, and I don't have any new species, any species in the model, but if I would have already here species, then it will give me the choice to place these uh, copied species into specific compartment and to replace one of my existing species with this one. But right now it's easy, I just copy it and it goes here and it's uh, uh, kind of to be safe it calls them new new as a pkc in c0 because uh, we also can move it can, can if if there are multi-compartmental model then we can move it into different compartments and i believe the traits will be yeah it will be uh, all the everything is moved properly uh word of caution it may be at some point that the reaction will be too complicated it will go from five from reaction across five compartment into reaction across three compartments here so you have to be very careful when copying but in theory yes you can do so if you can choose several right now my virtual cell is too slow copy paste and then it again will ask me if i wanna so now i have already the old species so i can actually when i copy i can merge so this rough minus one will be will replace these species that already exist in the model so uh it's a very uh convenient way to start a model but as i told it's pretty dangerous if you already have a so do, do, don't do what I, I just did with multiple reactions do it one by one uh Okay, so I just want to uh, very quickly go through model exchange and formats because this is a very important issue. So uh, you worked on virtual cell and Copazi, but uh, if you did a model in one tool, you very often can bring it to another tool. It's not always the case. For example, the spatial model from virtual cell, you will not be able to use it on Copazi because Copazi doesn't support spatial. 
And the same steady state model from Copasi cannot be imported into the virtual cell. With some exceptions. And exceptions is that the regular standard for exchange between tools is SBML. And if you go into the virtual cell, you will uh, like file, export, it will give you a menu and will be SBML different. So you will see a lot of form. Oh. Ah, yeah, because uh, uh, we, so we have to go and create application to be able to uh, export it. So new deterministic. So now we should be able to export it in many different formats. Yeah, so you can export it on Binogen, Combine, you can export a MATLAB uh, just a set of ODEs, uh, you can create PDF that you can use uh, and SBML. So level three version two. Yeah. Oh, okay, so right now it's a single SBML and then set ML. So uh, SBML is the keyword for exchange of models. So when I talked about biomods database, I mentioned this SBML. Uh, virtual cell can export it uh, and import. Copasi can export and import. So what you have to be aware of, there are, like even if you don't know what's an SBML, uh, pay attention to this level three version two. So sometimes uh, SBML versions are incompatible and oh, partially compatible. So uh, <laughs> Copasi and virtual cell are good. SBML export and import this one and Copasi supports it. But for example, there is another tool which is Cell Designer. And Cell Designer doesn't support level three. It supports level two. And uh, Virtual Cell doesn't support level three. So what we do, we just uh, export from Virtual Cell to Copasi, and then export from Copasi to level two and use in Cell Designer. So the bottom line is that there are tricks but if you have SBML, then you can use multiple tools, not just virtual cell and Copasi. But uh, uh, the regular use of Copasi and virtual cell, for example, you use uh, fitting capabilities for Copasi, you create a nice model, and then you export it, you import into virtual cell, and you place virtual cell model into spatial framework and again you have to make sure that your rates if you have something on the membrane then you cannot use anymore this perfect fitted rates you have to adjust them and you can but you have to go and again uh, all rates from volumes to membranes can be manually adjusted it's just virtual cell doesn't do it so you have if you have a, a membrane density you know the vol the area of the membrane, you know the number of molecules, you know the Avogadro number, so you can convert it into micromolar. And then you can uh, mm -hmm. use it uh, in uh, some you know tools that don't support density, don't support membrane densities. So uh I... but, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually, it's on our Copasi side. This level three, uh, version three, level one, uh, which we we are right now adapting to do level two. But our default is still if you export uh, level two, version two, level four, which is the mostly supported version of SBML out there. Yeah, yeah, and this is. Uh... What uh, yes, Frank of... is correct. <laughs> we import. Yeah, I don't know level. why we don't support level two version four. I think that we supported it until recently, yeah. and it's really pain because <laughs> to to move it to some other SBML tools, we really have to go through Copasi. Yeah. 
So it's a question to Jim. Uh, yeah. We have level two version for here uh, pretty recently. But again, I mean that level level three or two is uh, uh, more important than version. So if you have a level three version two, it's the same as almost the same as level three version one. No, it's unfortunately it isn't. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. There, there are nuances. It's the details. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, uh, if you dig a little bit more, then. Uh, uh, so you will bring uh, SBML models uh, for, as I said, from different uh, supplemental materials, from Biomods database, and even uh, all regular databases like Reactum, SabiRK. So, uh, do I have, so Reactum. Reactum has also export in SBML. It may be without parameters, but it will give you some. Uh, nice uh, starting point and sabrk has export in uh, sbml so uh you have to if you grab as much uh, as possible of data from different sources and you don't want to retype it in the model then you should be able to kind of at least uh, not to be afraid of uh, SBML and it's really you should not. So for example, if you uh, export it, you, you should you should not be afraid, but you should and as always pay attention to what you're doing. So this is we saved it. We go into the virtual cell file, import, and is it here? It's in downloads. Uh, So when you import, you have to pay attention to warnings or errors. So compartment spatial dimension is uh, not set, assuming three, compartment is not set, assuming one, assuming three, assuming one. So all these assumptions you should be able to check and uh, like, is it true or not? And then, Sometimes you got just errors that will tell you that uh, you, so, okay, so this is uh, uh, not very good because we have uh, uh, what is displayed by virtual cell is a species and then there is a name which is displayed here as BML name, but still you can, uh, so if you go here to reaction diagram you should be yeah you should be able to make sense of it and you see this is uh, these are two compartments and i believe that uh, what actually was not defined in so you see it's a plasma membrane so this compartment is a plasma membrane but sbml file didn't have it it just didn't set it so what you do you go into this file and and you change plasma member you change three to you you, you manually set uh, the dimension of a compartment to two i'm not going to do it now uh i'm i like i want to finish soon but the mm -hmm. bottom line uh it's easy and it will save you a lot of grief when you uh, work on models that you want to move from tool to tool. Uh, okay, so I'm almost done. So as I said, 
there are some errors and very often these errors are fixable like units values uh, uh, compartments and so on you also like if you do rule-based models then they exchange via binary gen language and then resources for sbml models so we talked about the resources for parameters and sbml data is almost the same you have a biomodel database you have pathway comments that can be taken directly from virtual cell but also pathway comments uh, again just type everything in google and it will give you access to the collection of uh, different pathways that uh, uh, yeah different pathways from a variety of uh, databases uh generally speaking so okay. okay so this is image so it's it's so you 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 can go and uh, find some useful information here we have it already in a virtual cell so you can go let's see pkc search yeah and what will happen now if i will bring it i will bring it over this model so i don't want to do it but again you should be able to bring a lot of uh, information into the model uh to start with so uh what else various databases react home sabrk wikipedia uh rule-based models and uh, just to finish you saw in uh, uh, export formats for virtual cell not only sbml but you also saw sadml engine copazi you saw sbgen visualization and then uh, virtual cell supports vcml and bionogen is bngl so uh, these are all formats that you use to exchange models between tools so sbml is a major one but uh, uh, if you want to visualize it then you can maybe export it in sbgen and there are converters from sbgen to sbml although probably they are not good or not working now and there is a biopax which is a biological pathway exchange and there are way again converters from biopax to sbml and finally what i want to talk just the last three minutes Jan tomorrow will be talking about biosimulators. So biosimulators is based on uh, SEDML and combined archive notion. And virtual cell and Copazi, we all have export as uh, uh, both uh, SEDML and Copazi. So we have a SEDML for, oh, sorry, SEDML and combine. So uh very important so far we talked only about models and model is uh, sorry and model is just a reaction network uh, uh, parameters and that's it so when you exchange uh, models you also want to exchange simulation results to exchange simulation results you also want to exchange how you simulated the type of the solver the time for which you simulate the parameters that are used in various simulations not just a single simulation but maybe this what's in virtual cell you have a set of different uh, uh, parameter scans that you want to use and then images that you generate with the simulations so it is all called combined archive and as a part of it which is related to how you generate the data is called SADML, simulation experiment description markup language so kupazi and virtual cell can exchange them although 
it's still a little bit buggy so but when you exchange a model with sbml you exchange just a model when you exchange a sbml you exchange model and the way to simulate it when you exchange combine archive you exchange a model annotations uh, the way to simulate the model and also the simulation results and maybe if you have a, a kind of complicated initial conditions for example uh, the data used to for fitting then it also comes into combined archive and most likely you won't need it uh, recently I mean, for, for some time because combined archive is uh, within virtual cell and copasi it's difficult to uh, use but by simulations that will be that we will be talking tomorrow is using it so if you wanna uh you like you have already the model you have already simulation outcomes and you wanna dump them online for someone else to be able to see your data and to uh, maybe change a little bit parameters and re-simulate it so this will be done tomorrow any questions <laughs>